Welcome back to another episode of Level 5 Education Lockdown. It's your boy Amir, and I want to start this episode by giving a huge shout out to some of my new and my first followers. Woogie, Donnell, and Jay. I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all are really day ones to Education Lockdown, and I appreciate y'all from the heart. Seriously. Now, in the second episode, I talked about corruption and how an administration can make or break a school. Now, we have to remember that I don't only cover level five school situations or my personal stories or Baltimore City stories when it comes to schools. Nationwide, inner cities, suburbs, rural areas. If it goes down in the school, I'm on it and we're gonna discuss it. Now this is this is a perfect situation, a perfect case of you can have a school building literally anywhere. It could be in Maryland, it could be in Mars, it could be anywhere. If the administration is not even shady, just lazy, just lazy. You're in for a huge headline. Huge headline. And that's what we have here. Now, we're going to go to Damascus, Maryland, in Montgomery County. Which Montgomery County is one of the wealthiest uh, wealthiest counties in the country for um, when it comes to schools, everything. Really the world. And Damascus High School is a football school. It's a big school, about 1,300 kids. They're known for football. It's a good school, and it's in a football town that's kind of rare in Maryland. Like It's like something you would see in Texas. Like When Damascus plays, when the football team plays, the whole town shuts down. They watch the game. Kind of like a small college town. And the varsity team, I believe at one point, had won like 50 games in a row, back-to-back -back state champions, all that stuff. All right, so this is the type of situation with, we're, look, we're about to look at. It's like a Friday Lights type of high school. Just keep that in mind. Cause I'm about to read y'all something, all right? I want you to understand that these things only happen in situations and environments that are lackadaisical or ne or even worse, negligent when it comes to administrations, staffs, coaching staffs, anything. I got something to read for y'all. And I, and I may have to warn y'all, it's, it's a little bit graphic. Teen pleads to second degree rape in Damascus High School locker room assaults. A 15-year-old former football player at Maryland's Damascus High School pleaded Thursday to rape and attempted rape counts for his role in last fall's broomstick assaults in the school's locker room, according to three people familiar with the outcome of the, a closed hearing in Montgomery County Juvenile Court. So this kid was in this kid was on the junior varsity team. All right. So let's let's see what happens. All right. All right. Here we go. But at an earlier court hearing, when the cases still were in adult court, I guess at some point the case went from adult court to juvenile court, Montgomery County's Deputy State Attorney Peter Feeney said that about 3 p.m. on October 31st, some 30 minutes before the start of the last JV practice of the season, 30 minutes before practice, the lights went out in the freshman section of the locker room as players were changing into their gear. Feeney said players could hear a broomstick being banged against a wall. It's time, one of the assailants allegedly said, as Feeney recounted in court. Players on the team had heard about getting the broom or brooming months earlier, but did not know the validity or gravity of the rumors, according to records. On the afternoon of the charged assaults, according to prosecutors, attackers pushed the broom handle several times through one boy's underwear and into him. Two other boys were pinned and jabbed in their buttocks with the handle. And teammates knocked the fourth victim to the ground and stomped on him as he fought off the broom, prosecutors have said. Players who tried to escape the room were met at the door by a suspect holding them back, prosecutors said. The attacks probably lasted less than five minutes, according to police accounts. So, what we have here is a gang rape of a child, of a freshman in high school, a child, 30 minutes before football, the last football practice of the season in the locker room. And you notice it said that someone turned the lights out in the freshman section of the locker room. So, everyone else was still in there. Or or something was going on because only, only one... um section of the lights were turned off. Now let me ask you. Have you even heard of something like that happen in any school that you know? 
right? A hazing like that. Now, what kind of environment do you think the coaching staff and the and the administration provided that some kid kids would have the balls, although it doesn't take balls to do something this heinous, but the balls 30 minutes before your last practice in the locker room, you're holding kids down and trying to put a broomstick in his ass while someone guards the door and saying, no, y'all can't leave. This is the junior varsity team. Now, 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 mind you, the varsity program is like elite, right? You don't think any of them knew about this? How long has this haze been going on for? You think this is the first time something like this happens? Someone turns the lights off and they're banging the broom saying it's broom time or something like that? I bet you it isn't. And we're going to find out. Trust me, I'm on it. Now, I guarantee you, right, that the reason these players had the balls to do something like this is because they knew that the coaches were negligent and that if somebody said something, they would laugh it off or they would say, yeah, right, or they would just brush it under the rug. That's why it happened. Listen, I've coached teams. I've been on coaching staffs that have won city championships. I know, I personally know great coaches, great great people who are who work at schools, plenty of them. You think this would this would even something like this would happen on their watch? Players would even think that hmm, let's do this. Thirty minutes in the locker room, thirty minutes before it's not that long a time, thirty minutes before practice, your last one of the year. Right? The question we should be asking is, what made these th- these kids think that they can get away with this? To pin someone down and put a broom handle in his in his in his butt. That's some that's some gruesome shit. That's some straight prison shit. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Right? People are they're kicking, they're trying to get away. It's a gang rape. Now let's see let's see the outcome. Now. Oh, look at this. The head varsity football coach at Damascus. This is this happened a couple months later. This is January. This is a couple months ago, but this was a few months um, or maybe half a year after the assault. It is with great sadness and much reservation that I have decided to resign, but I have come to a crossroad and I feel I need to make a change for myself and my family. Hmm. That doesn't make sense. I mean, you just won 51 straight games. I mean, you didn't you, you didn't make an announcement that you're about to go to college or the pros. It's a good time for you to resign. Why would a varsity coach who sets the tone for the entire program, and when your team is one of the best teams or is the best team in the state for years on end, I guarantee you got respect. I guarantee you that varsity coach can do damn near what he wants as long as he doesn't cross the line, and, and the staff will let him let him let him get whatever he wants. You want it, you got it. You want, you want it to swipe, sweep something under the rug? We'll do it. Why would you step down? I'll tell you why. Because you knew about it. You knew about it, and it wasn't the first time, and it was a hazing thing, I guarantee you. And we're going to find out. We're going to find out. A number of Damascus personnel have resigned and or been reassigned since the locker room sex assaults. Listen listen to this list. Principal Casey Cross, Assistant Principal Manaya Jules, Athletic Director A number of Damascus personnel have resigned and or been reassigned since the locker room sex assaults. Principal Casey Krause, Assistant Principal Manaya Jules, Athletic Director Joe Duty, Head JV Football Coach Vinny Colb- Colbert, and now the varsity coach Wallach. So the entire administration is gone. See you later. Gone. JV coach gone, varsity coach gone, assistant principal and principal. Why? Because they all knew. They all knew. And then if the principal didn't know, and maybe the principal didn't know, maybe the vice principal, maybe they weren't sure what's going on, the athletic director knew. Whatever it was, they didn't investigate. They didn't give a fuck. They didn't want to stir up a fucking big 
big big storm, big can of worms, as they say. They didn't want to do it. Now watch this. As I said, I bet you it's not the first time. I bet you it's not. Because who would, I mean, that's like some shit that like you see in movies. You know, it, these are things that are passed down. These are like treacherous activities that have gone on for, for more than one year. All right. 30 minutes before practice in the locker room on Halloween. A new lawsuit alleges Damascus High School staff members knew of a culture of sexual assault in the football program for years beyond the 2018 rapes of four players. So it was in, it was in 2018. Of four players, but failed to intervene in an effort to protect its reputation and one of the, as one of the best teams in the country. We saw this with Penn State. We saw it with Penn State over a football team. What they will compromise. So now we know that they knew about this. They knew about it. They didn't want to say anything. They didn't get anyone in trouble. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. And they knew. A great example of why an administration can make or break a situation. The Damascus High School football team. JV coach, the, the coach, they all know. They all knew. They all fucking knew. And they didn't do anything. They let a kid get sodomized with a broomstick. Traumatized forever. And I, I have to look up to see what the sentencing is. I couldn't find it. But I guarantee it was nothing crazy. I believe they're all back down to juvenile court. So, what, a couple years max? Not even that, probably. Because I believe in one of the articles here, it says that uh, one of the students had ADHD and was off his medication. Like, is that, a, is that an excuse? Oh, you're not, you didn't take your ADHD medicine, so you grabbed a broomstick and you pin someone down and you put it in his ass? You turned the lights off? Like, that's, that's rapist activity. That is rapist activity. Partner of the law firm... And one of the several attorneys representing the victim said during a press conference Thursday morning that, that the defendants knew about the tradition of brooming in which sophomore football players would terrorize freshman football players by threatening to, and at times, sodomizing the young players with a broom. They're letting freaking sophomores, 15, they're, they're letting fucking sophomores terrorize freshmen. Because a varsity football team is good. When I tell you the public school system is fucked up, we're going we're gonna to talk about all that on this channel. But these administrations, man, these fucking administrations, they all have to be vetted. And shout out to all the good administrators. I know, matter of fact, a good friend of mine is one of the best, best athletic directors in the city. Good, good man. So I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not by all means like casting a, a broad brush saying all administrators are crooked. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we have to look into this. We have to bring light to these situations because what happened to the principal? She resigned or got reassigned. The athletic director, dude, the athletic director should be in prison. The varsity coach should be in prison. The JV coach should be in prison. If you ask me. Negligence. A culture where the students can't even go and say something about this, which I'm sure they did because it got out. How do they find out? About, how do they find out about this one? Because you know why? Some kids they don't talk. Some kids will get sodomized and say nothing to anybody. They won't tell their mom. They let that shit eat them up for life. Because the fucking varsity football team is on a winning streak. Damascus fucking high school. Montgomery County, Maryland. Y'all had some fucked up shit going on in there in that locker room, man. Come on, man. A tradition of rooming? Come on, man. That's group rape. That is group rape. And I hate to say that word, but that's what it is. That's how ugly it is. And it needs to be talked about. It needs to be. Like this this case it wasn't even nationwide news, I don't think. This was going on for years. How many victims, how many people have been assaulted? We don't even know. We just know of the four that came, came. only four have come forward. Four only. Where's the rest? Four only from one incident. Where are the rest of the kids? Hey, man. 
Like I said, if you have a child in public school, hey, you better go in and take a look. You better pop up every now and then and see how the administration is running and, tr and trust your gut feeling. If you walk in there and it's a shit show, and we'll talk about that more. Level five, education, lockdown.